bachelors choose their perfect woman without knowing who's real and who's a deep fake. Like, subscribe, or don't. I don't give a shit. Joining me today are two special guests. Established content creators, writers, directors, Lauren Gillis and Elaine Hutton. They're here today to talk about their comedy sketch series, Content Farm. And they have an established background in the performing, writing, directing uh, from Lester Tripp's Theatre of Lester Trips Theater. And I'm just so excited to have you here and welcome. Thank Thanks you. for having us, Christine. Yeah, so I watched Content Farm and oh my goodness, I was not only blown away, but it's so creative and so it makes you think. Mm. And I want to know, and the audience wants to know as well as the viewers and listeners, how did you come up with the idea? I mean, I love the title, Content Farm. <laughs> so basically it was from being inundated with content from real content farms or content mills so you know content farm basically be um a, a platform an institution um a content creator um <laughs> that puts out tons and tons of very low quality content um and you, so one of the most sort of recognizable ones would be something like five minute crafts. So you're seeing absurd, dangerous, meaningless, colorful life hacks with, you know, hot glue and uh, food and garbage uh, just being pumped out, you know, seven, 10, 12 videos a day. Yeah. And often pieces of content being recycled within the channel's output, sometimes like even in the same week. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing this in our feed and thinking, wow, it's so bad like the content is just so awful surely it can't just be humans putting this out because how how could their brains take it um and in fact in i mean sadly a lot of real content farms are run by humans and staffed by poor humans who are doing this for a living mm -hmm. but we started thinking about uh because things like buying fake instagram followers which are not humans is so normalized as kind of a background thing but as we're scrolling we're not necessarily thinking oh she's a bot he's a bot that's a bot uh this is not human content we started thinking okay what if a content generating bot ran a content farm and mm -hmm. it really took off mm. and you know what like what was the process like was it like two years three years five years like how how long did it come to develop so we started making a demo in 2020. Uh, we got some funding to make a prototype. Um, and at first it was more like a sketch show. It mm -hmm. still had the narrative thread of Judith, the, the bot, the neural network content creator. Um, but it had some less obviously related sketches in it. Then we got production funding and turned it into a series. And it sort of coalesced into kind of all the the sub worlds within this larger world have something to do with either um you know faking your face faking your voice the generation of meaningless content stealing other people's content stealing other people's faces and everything sort of revolves around that in the series right now and it was really interesting having like um coming from theater and wanting to make like all these little sketches but have a narrative thread and have it relate back to each other in an interesting way. We love sketch comedy and it's one of the things that, you know, you always are like, oh, I wonder what happened more. Like, give me more about that. And with content farms, they do. Like, <laughs> they'll take the same content and they'll show it to you again and they'll show it to you again. And so we wanted to sort of weave together this narrative something that you don't usually have in, in sketch comedy, as well as the ability to like unfold, unfold, unfold these sort of smaller sketch comedy worlds into larger, longer narratives. It, it's it's scary um, when I was watching it <laughs> and, and educational in its own right. And, you know, like, and I want to congratulate you on your launch. Thank you. It was, yes, it was wonderful. So what, what has that feedback been like so far? Um, I feel like it's landing with people. Mm -hmm. it, 
it, it's so strange the time that this has been released because three years ago when we were like okay so you know there's a content generating bot and it's stealing everyone's face and it's stealing their voice it can fake their you know it can deep fake their whole body people are like what's a deep fake um you know where in my life would i find a content generating bot and now in the past few months the past two weeks even yeah um you know there's just been an explosion of development oh. and launches in ai and everyone's talking about gpt4 and yes. deepfakes have become so normalized at yeah. this point that you know we don't have to explain um as much <laughs> we, don't have, we have to explain yeah. Some sense. Yeah. yeah you're like the pioneers I mean, it was really, I mean, this is, this is really so unique concept and, and, you know, it's just like, as I said, it, it, it kind of makes you think, you know, is that a bot? I, I mean, it's just, it's just so like Love Island. I mean, I saw, you know, how, like, was it expensive? Like how, what was the budget like you can, you know, share? <laughs> for sure. So our, our budget for the three episodes was just over 200 K. So. Mm. Not, not a lot for, you know, a T TV, um, mm. I mean, TV, web series, what have you, um, yeah. we were in this program that we, that we built this, um, from it's sort of like, here was the cap of how much money you can have to make whatever, whatever you want to make. And I know between myself, Lauren and our other producer, Nicholas, like we felt the uniqueness of this story and of this moment that we were like, you know what, instead of reasonably <laughs> making yeah. a fun 10 minute episode to sort of just use as a, you know, as a little sneak peek, we were like, no, no, let's, let's push it to the, <laughs> to the limits. Let's get every shoestring and favor mm -hmm. and extra thousand hours that we have <laughs> um, um, to put into this so that we wanted to show the style, the style of the narrative arcs, the style over the three episodes. And there's things that we shot that even got cut. We made a washing machine out of garbage, sheet metal. Oh, wow. Yeah. And we put her in like this handmade garbage machine and, and we rolled her and, and it's, and as we were editing, it, it had to get cut. And we're hoping that it will have like in this content farm, you know, cycle, yes. we'll be able to release it on our own in a different way and have every moment that we filmed and all the B roll and all of that sort of make the most out of it. So, yes, yes, okay. there'll be more like, you, you know, it will continue on, you know, I'm, I'm sure that, but, you know, going like um, it's Jessica who starts to use different ways like that's can you share a little bit about you know the um the storyline so uh in the show there's a pair of bots and they're sort of you know apologies to all computer scientists um you know like shameful anthropomorphized uh neural network um and so the bots create this fake instagram influencer called jessica and basically um, you know, do a composite of a whole bunch of different ladies faces from Instagram and the technique that we used to actually realize this character was deep fake. So the bot is doing sort of a more advanced version of fictional deep faking and we're actually using deep fake. So Jessica, the influencer that you see in the story, as the bots learn to uh, figure out what is offensive, what generates revenue, what's appealing content, what is appealingly intimate, what's off putting. Um, the influencer Jessica is played by Elaine, so her facial movements and you know from the neck down and the voice are Elaine and the face is, is nobody. <laughs> yes, I mean it's it's like um but like what would you want people to take away from the series? I think if it causes you to um enjoy an aspect of the internet that you hate and feel powerless to stop um and also causes you to ask even one time huh maybe this outrageous thing i saw that makes me so angry and want to kill other people it came from a bot could it have come from a bot then i would be happy <laughs> <laughs> because it's just it's overwhelming i i know for myself you, you feel like is that real is that 
mm-hmm. fake. And, you know, as I keep saying, when I, I it's like, this is needed. This, th- what you produce, what you created is, uh, and coming from an impressive theater background, like, did I miss anything when I said directors, writers, singers, do you sing too? No, we sing a bit, not in this show. <laughs> um, we, des- we design, we are the, the mm-hmm. designers and content farm as well. Yeah, so um, is there anything else that, was there like a favorite part that you enjoyed the most? Because you take us on a journey, but yeah, is there? In the, in the creation of it or in the show itself? In the show itself. Yeah, yeah. I love any moment when a character is waiting for the, the death knell of the comments. Um, mm. That moment of tension, there's a few of them. Um, which, and I find it funny that it, it's always a bot waiting to find out what the comments say. But of course, we <laughs> that they're going to have human anxiety, but they don't. Do bots even have anxiety? I don't know. Um, but yeah, the anxiety <laughs> of waiting for the comments to bore in. Yes, yeah. I like the dogs, the three yeah. dogs. That was so cool. You know? So here I'm giving it away. But if, you know, so so what's next for you two? So we'd love to make more content farm, but in the immediate future, um, we're working on a project called Day Gamers, and it's about a woman who attempts to make a documentary about three pickup artists who are trying to revolutionize the world of uh, seduction by gaming in the day. They are the Day Gamers, Um, but of course, (laughs) the mid-2000s, Me Too, Elevator Gate, the pandemic, everything... uh, you know, comes at this documentary and she has to remake it and remake it and remake it. Mm -hmm. And so it's about um, the awkwardness of um, trying to date in the, in the 2010s. Yeah. Um, (laughs) And it's also about um, the hostility uh, that people (laughs) receive on the internet when they try to make a positive change. Um, And in this, in this story, everyone is animated earwigs. Wow. That's just, can't wait to see it. <laughs> we, learned, we learned a whole new set of film skills, like took all, everything we learned from theater, applied it to film, and yes. now we're like, okay, what is a new challenge that we can figure out, which is animation with live action and com- combining all of our design skills as well, so. Yes, you know, an impressive theater background, as I said, and you know, it's transferable skills, right? And here you are and there's more so people want to check it out where can they go uh so if you just go on cbcgem.ca and type in content farm you can watch all three episodes and if you just search content farm on youtube uh, you can subscribe to our youtube and we will have plenty of nasty <sighs> garbage content um uh curated and edited together that fits into the world of content farm for you to watch in the coming months oh it's wonderful is there anything else you'd like to add follow you where you follow you <laughs> um, no it's a, it's been a really exciting ride to get into this world all every detail of the content farm world all of the design all of the pacing all the music like the time we spent with our sound designers, shout out to Quinn and Drew, they were amazing. Like just the fullness of this world, like it's exciting for us to either A, get the chance to continue the story as when we wrote it, it has more evolutions and more expansions and the ability to also do that just online through the sort of, you know, expanding out these storylines, seeing behind all the B-roll, all the extra stuff that you don't get to see in a polished polish mm. series, that there is a place for them to live on the internet, which is like in itself, like in a very exciting form. And anything you'd like to add? I would say to anyone listening, if you're, you know, if you liked, if you check out an episode of Quantum Farm and you like it, if you're into parasocial relationships and dead mall aesthetics, we'll be making more stuff for you. <laughs> Thank you. I love it. I love it. And did, did you want to leave, um, you know, your Instagram handles or anything? Because we had that. Yeah, sh- sure. Should we just say them? Yeah, they're yes. underscore yes. content dot farm underscore. 
Thank you. Thanks so much. And I'd like you to come back. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks, Christine. Thank you. Thank you.